The most important foundation of atheism as it reached its peak in the 19th century was Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin proposed that the origin of man and all other living things could be explained by unconscious natural mechanisms. In that way, he offered a false explanation for the origins of life for which atheists had been unable to account for hundreds of years. In fact, the atheists of the time rushed to embrace Darwin's theory. Beginning with Marx and Engels, 19th century atheist thinkers described the theory as lying at the heart of their philosophies. However, the major support of atheism itself collapsed with the scientific discoveries of the 20th century. The evidence put forward by different branches of science, such as paleontology, biochemistry, anatomy, and genetics, undermined the theory of evolution from a number of directions. Darwin had maintained that all living species were descended from a common ancestor and had grown apart from one another in a series of small progressive changes. He hoped that fossils would provide evidence for that claim. Yet all the fossil research throughout the 20th century presented a totally different picture. Not one transitional species that might prove Darwin's theory was found. For example, the phenomenon known as the Cambrian Explosion is by itself sufficient to destroy the theory of evolution. Almost all the basic categories in the animal world emerged all of a sudden in that early geological period. Living things from very different classes such as mollusks, vertebrates, arthropods, and echinoderms with their very different physical characteristics emerge with their exceedingly complicated organs and systems all at once. This fact that emerges from the fossil record demolishes the theory of evolution and is proof of creation instead. In putting his theory forward, Darwin based it on the idea that animal breeders produce different species of dog or horse. He then applied the changes observed in those creatures to the whole of nature and suggested that all living things might have descended from one common ancestor in this way. However, that claim was made in the light of the low level of the 19th century science, and discoveries made in the 20th century demolished it. Decades of observations of different animal or plant species reveal that variation within living things never went beyond specific genetic bounds. Genetic experiments, on the other hand, showed that the mutations that Darwinists regarded as an evolutionary mechanism could never add new genetic information to living things, but that, on the contrary, they always had harmful effects. The countless mutation experiments carried out on fruit flies only yielded deformed individuals. According to Darwin's theory, life on earth must have begun from inanimate matter. 
So how did the first living thing come about? Darwin failed to address that issue, contenting himself with writing that the first cell could easily have formed in some warm little pond. Those evolutionist biologists who attempted to make good this deficiency in Darwinism ended up disappointed. All observations and experiments showed that it was impossible for a living cell to emerge from inanimate matter. Scientists then discovered something else in the second half of the 20th century. Life, and especially the living cell and the complex organelles within it, is full of the most complicated designs. Our eyes, with which no camera can possibly compare, bird wings that inspired aeronautical technology, the complex and interdependent systems within the living cell, the extraordinary information contained in DNA, all these are clear examples of design. They also lead the theory of evolution that regards life as the product of blind chance utterly helpless. These scientific facts left Darwinism backed into a corner by the end of the 20th century. Scientists in many Western countries, particularly the United States, today reject Darwinism in favor of the theory of intelligent design. The reason for that is that the scientific facts show that life emerged with design, not by chance. In short, science once again confirms the fact that God created all living things. The Austrian psychiatrist Sigmund Freud represented atheist dogma in the psychological field in the 19th century. Freud put forward a theory of psychology that denied the existence of the soul and attempted to explain man's internal world in terms of sexual impulses. Freud claimed that to have accounted for the origin of psychological problems. Yet his theory actually encouraged new ones. This teaching, which describes man as a species of animal that lives only to satisfy its selfish desires, actually increased loneliness, fear and depression in people by debasing spiritual values. Pictures by artists influenced by Freud depicted the dark world of that teaching. Freud's most important attack was aimed at religion. In his book, The Future of an Illusion, published in 1927, he alleged that religious belief was a kind of mental sickness and maintained that religious beliefs would disappear as man progressed. <laughs> 